Okay, so here we are. It's Jackson and Ken O'Neill, and we're back uh, doing what we do best here on YouTube together, and that's uh, give you information about about uh, self protection. And what we're going to do is answer some questions that we've had concerning our last outings, and because uh, we haven't had time. And logistically, we weren't able to connect to do that. So now we are able to do that. So what's going to happen is uh, Ken's going to talk about his, uh, as he calls it, a workshop that he held in St. Louis. It was outdoors. I know it was colder than hell there. And uh, it was pretty bad weather. I mean, it wasn't cold as in Alaska or Antarctica, but it was, it was, it was not, I, like, I'm in the fan right now. I'm in the jungle again. And, uh, you know, it's 90 in the daytime here so uh yeah I, I he's not anywhere near that um but anyway he's going to answer about that and i'm going to talk and i'm going to talk about what i did in ohio where it was not good great weather for me uh, either but uh i'm out of there now right now so and then we're going to talk on about that but anyway so we're going to be answering broad questions about what did we do what did we cover how does that connect with JKD? Uh, where, where we're going from there? What we got planned? Uh, how you can be part of it? That sort of thing. So anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Ken, and he can explain what he covered out there in uh, Forest Park. I think, right? Forest Park. No, no. Actually, we had to move indoors. Did you? Okay. Yeah, see, I didn't know that. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Right. See, there was a big event. We, yeah, it's everything got screwed up, so we had to move indoors, which actually. Turned out uh, okay. Uh, it wouldn't have been okay if I hadn't had about four people drop at the last minute. There, some folks got sick and whatnot. So uh, they said, "Keep our money." You know, everyone I'm we're cool about their money and stuff. But yeah, so I wouldn't have had enough room. Uh, luckily, we were able to pack the people we had into the space I normally train in. So that's how we dealt with that. That worked out okay. I have a follow-up that's going to happen uh, probably around the 6th of January. I'm just waiting for some of my law enforcement folks to get their schedules. They get their schedule for the whole year coming up, and i got to see, make sure they're off when I do it. But uh, I think January 6th, there's another. There's a lot of material, and I have to do these in four-hour blocks to get through it. It's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, exercises and drills that we do. And this, this is, is not... It's really not offensive knife work. It's really defensive. It, to me, it's the hardest knife work, which is, you know, he got one and you ain't, you know, that kind of knife work, which is, you know, that's a pretty rough scenario, of course, right? And especially if you got two or three. So we do a lot of drills and exercises along the lines of, of you know, giving people some answers to that, how to move. You know, you can't, you can't do like a technique by technique approach to that uh, very easily because, you know, variables change so fast, even from what, what, are, you know, where are you, what are you standing on uh, to what, you know, what are you, what are kind of clothing you're wearing? I mean, there's so many variables that I've moved away from, from trying to have too much of any kind of a standard, you know, specific answer to things. What we do a lot more movement and timing work and uh, situational scenario work and, and, you know, people, uh, it's without giving too much away. It's it's a little tricky because basically the idea would be that um, let's say you would uh, limit your your space that you can move in to one side of your body, and so you can only operate in a shorter, smaller space. Okay, so you set up situations. It's like, well, how are you going to how are you going to approach moving? Because what most people want to do when that knife comes in is they want to they want to really stand there, get really tensed up, and, and right away all they try to do is grab the knife arm, which can be a great thing to do sometimes, but other times you need to, you need to maneuver before you can grab. You know, you need to uh, solve problems with your environment. So that's that's just to give an idea of one component of a lot of the things that that I do. Another one is very psychological, uh, and that is to um, people think you're nuts when you first do this, but uh, it's called activation stabbing where one guy just stands there and has to, has to breathe. And another guy just basically stabs the ever living crap out of you with a, uh, a blunt metal knife. And you learn to accept the fact that you're going to get cut. You're going to get stabbed. 
And you got to be able to accept it. You got to be able to try to keep functioning and keep moving, breathing, trying to learn how to yield when that knife hits instead of tensing up and pushing into it, which is what I've often seen be a natural tendency of people. You know, the knife hits and they go, ah, and they're, you know, they're, ah, you know, and, they, and he tense up the muscle, right? And the guy's pushing and it's going in deeper, you know, rather than learning how to move and give with those shots. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of drilling because that's kind of counterintuitive, you know. Um, to, to be able to take take a shot and learn how to move your body with the shot is something that's, you know, it's it's a key component of any kind of contact work. But with the knife, it's the psych of it's different, right? I know you would agree with that. The knife, the knife is different. I, I do an experiment while I walk up to guys and whip out a real blade. And, you know, the minute you show them the edge of the blade, people just, they naturally back off because from every time in their life they've ever even cut their finger or anything else, that's a natural reaction, like a hot flame. You're going to back. Yeah, right. Ah! <laughs> See, <laughs> that nasty thing. I was, I was, I was stabbing Ken while he was talking, so yeah, he didn't say I that. Didn't say that. I was, I was stabbing See? Ken. Uh, so, yeah. Got a lot so, of, a lot of okay, so they make it clear then what you're doing, what you did last time was part of a continuing knife uh, defensive. Uh, teaching and training and that's what you're going to do again you're going to you're going to continue on with the knife work but now something that people are going to ask is okay can they join it can they pick it up at the next one i mean if they didn't do the other do this last one it, is it sequential in the fact that you must have the prerequisite of it or can you or can you come into the can you come into the next time that you do it january the 6th on without having Making it. Yeah, that's a really great point because none of this stuff, you know, none of this stuff is built like a lot of the kind of the more commercial traditional arts where, you know, you first you do A, then you do B. It's it, everything structured more like real combatives in that there's no linear progression. There's there's too many variables. There's too many spontaneous things that occur. So anybody could jump in at any point in any of these, and they're still developing skills because it's not. It's not about any kind of a, well, first he does this and you do that. Because one of the things I do show within all this is, well, even if the guy just does a simple up the middle thrust, as I was kind of alluding to earlier, there are so many variables to include in that simple thrust, you know, that yeah. you know, having just one answer, as you well know, is that's dangerous, you know, <laughs> you better be able to adapt. So the well, way I do it is a lot of add that. I mean, yeah, sure, there's specific things that are better to do than others. Yeah, yeah. That's covered as well. Yeah, I'm with you there, like not exposing your not exposing your arteries. I try not to anyway in the flow of things. You know, there's a lot of basic basic things like that that are that are incorporated. Sure, there's body mechanics, there are things like that. But what I'm getting at is what I never teach anything that says there's just only there's just only one thing you can do. I mean, see, it's tricky because in certain circumstances, there there are only one thing you can probably do, or that's the best answer. Yeah. Well, I know I understand what you're getting to, though, and that would be the connection to the JKD in the way that the way that we were trained, and that is the factor that you have a situation, environment, context is going to change to adapt to that. And you've had to train in that changing environment, and that's what you're doing. You're changing right. the environment on people. Sure. So, instead of being in a static, uh, clean antiseptic dojo or training gym or whatever where the lighting is very good the footing is very good the temperature is controlled people are wearing uh, workout clothes uh the footing is clear their, their vision is good that gives you a false sense it's like shooting paper targets or something that doesn't mean you're yeah. going to be able to, you're going to be able to shoot somebody coming at you in the dark uh and surprising right. you and same thing with a knife that's what we're getting that's what we're getting to is that that sort of stuff when you do it in the training hall like that, uh, and it's making me think of what Mike Salmon would say stuff about uh, having to do with sex, which is very accurate actually in analogy. But uh, that uh, if you're if okay if you're trying to say that you're very good with an inflated date, a rubber doll, and then you think that you can go from that to a real woman, as he would say, then you're sadly mistaken, brother. So same thing. Uh, Training, training with those uh, very predictable, predictable environment, predictable outcomes, predictable attacks. 
that's what we see the error with with uh, all, nearly everybody who's doing stuff. And that's where we were initially trained completely differently uh, in combat JKD. There's our there's the roots. They're the JKD roots. So we know that we've got to do that in training. And that's what you're alluding to is the fact that you're changing the environment all the time. You're not giving a predictable answer. Uh, you're trying to go for a objective. You have a, your goal directed, same thing as me. Your goal outcome, your outcome based, your performance outcome based. But how you go about doing that is going to change depending on if you're on ice or snow or you're wearing mittens and stuff like that. And that's exactly what all my training is about is a different environment. Because like just like shooting, if you can shoot – yeah, outdoors on a paper target doesn't mean you can shoot in an urban environment where you can't see. So where everything's crowded, that's totally different. And that's what you're getting to. And that what you're doing in the different uh, training segments that you do, because you, you're doing them in very small segments, is you're introducing people to a whole new set of variables, right? That's what it really is, yeah. So. A, lot of, a lot of difference, too, in, in mobility and timing, too, because as you know, I mean – yeah. yeah. To make you Distance. move more <laughs> than that damn knife coming at you. You, know, you can't simply go like this and block a slash. Distance. Yeah, distance, distance is everything with a knife. You know, everything. I'm giving out some stuff. Is everything. It's going to dictate what you can and cannot do. You know. That's right. So yeah. that that uh, yeah. So you're working on all those aspects. Okay. So how did it go though? I mean, what? How did it yeah, go? You know, people had a great time. I mean, I've got folks chomping at the bit to do the next one. I've got. The guys that that there was a little round of some flu going on or something, and the guys that were there were like, you know, they couldn't make it. They're they're chomping at the bit. I got some other people who, who uh, knew they couldn't come in, and they're going. So, oh, oh, this is going to be interesting too. I got a guy that was worked for the DOD for twenty years, and he's got a his daughter from Thailand is uh, her best friend is a Filipino girl who was trained in the Philippines by a, her father in a Filipino knife system. I don't know which system yet, uh, but apparently since she was little, and here's a good story about her. He was telling me that uh, <laughs> her boyfriend, who's a well-known drummer in a very well-known uh, band here in St. Louis that's been around for a long time. They do really good, funky, fun music and stuff. And uh, anyway, we'll so. We'll get off so, music or we'll never get off music. We'll what? get off music because we don't agree. We don't agree on, on music stuff, but okay. Well, anyway, so I'm just telling you, it just, it's just a band that travels all over the country because they uh, they do they just do fun dance music, party music, but they do it well, and they got good vocals, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, so the drummer in the band was dating this guy's daughter, uh, his daughter's best friend, I should say. She's Like I said, she's Filipino. So she's been trained in this knife system, so she's she's got high confidence. So there's somebody out fiddling around on their porch. I don't know the time frame. This uh, probably within the last couple of years, the drummer's off the road. That he's home, so they're in their place, and somebody's jacking around out on their porch trying to get in. He peeks out a little window and he says, "This guy's trying to break in," and he's kind of freaked out. So I guess they keep a baseball bat by the door. So she knocks him aside, grabs the baseball bat, opens the door, and beats the ever living crap out of this guy trying to break in. Man, lays him out. So. I just thought that's a, a pretty good story, pretty spunky little gal there. So she's going to be at this next one because she wants to see what I'm doing as far as defending, you know, uh, as far as defense work. So that'll be kind of that'll be interesting. And I know that it will be vastly different because she was ninety oh, percent different. Yeah, yeah. she was patterned. I, you know, we know that. I can predict that. You know, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, she was pattern trained, and that pattern doesn't work. I mean, in re that's exactly what you're trying. You're pattern busting. I mean, I think it's why yeah. you should actually label your stuff. You know what I mean? I think because that would be very – that would get you more people to understand what you're doing because you're pattern busting. Probably can't ferret out what you're doing while we're talking. I mean, they can't understand it. But if they've done Filipino martial arts, then they've been exposed – to what we call patterns because they're going to train people in patterns because it's easy to do that and people feel have a false sense of security and confidence about that sort of stuff but it doesn't work in reality and i can show you all sorts of stuff because that's my business that's my profession 
Uh, and what you're doing is busting patterns, which I think is very important to, to reiterate and to emphasize because you are pattern busting. Your, your teaching uh, is about pattern busting. And that's, once again, that ties into our JKD because our JKD was never about patterns. So if, if you were to look at these other people who teach patterns, like well, you're gonna do this and this drill and this and it's patterns. Uh, and I'm talking about all the famous JKD guys. They all do this stuff, you know. So uh, it's uh, I, that's it, and that's a vital thing to to get out to get out. Uh, but can okay. So I, I'm trying to I'm I'm asking you the questions that people will ask. How can they get advanced sign up or advanced notice about this? Because you're it, you're giving out a pretty because we're at the end of November. January, beginning of January is not that far off, really, to tell you the truth. So how can they how can they get information? More information, location, and all that other stuff. How can they get yeah. that? Just come to me on Facebook, right? Or now I'll, I'll throw my number up the real high tech way on a note card again, like I always okay. say. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so if you, yeah, if you're uh, yeah, because in the United States, if you're in the uh, which is what we're probably basically marketing for, unless you're really devoted and want to come from somewhere else which is fine that'd be great but we just know in reality that demographics are going to be probably in missouri illinois and maybe over a little bit more but that's it that's i mean reality we're just talking reality but if you want to come from somewhere else so what i was getting to is like cell phones in the united states now you can call anybody and it doesn't cost any more than any other call so yeah, put the put your cell put your cell phone number back up. But uh, you're on Facebook under Ken O'Neill, and I and it's on this. His name is on this video here on YouTube, so you can look at his name and just go to Facebook and look him up. Because <clears throat> there aren't there aren't any other ones. I, I now with the exact same spelling, there's not. So that uh, you'll find him, and you'll you'll recognize that it's. That it's Ken. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're Ken. Just, uh, you know me sharing your YouTube videos on on my page too. You'll you know that they'll see you too. So they'll, they'll know. Yeah. They'll see. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's true. But my point, my point is that hey, get in now. Give him advance notice because he needs to plan logistically on how many people and stuff. And do you? Yeah. Do you know where you're going to have this one? I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, that's why I'm glad you said that because this is really crucial this time because we won't be outdoors. We'll be indoors. It'll be January, and January around here can be so rough. Most yeah, it's, people wouldn't even do it. So we're uh, there's a place in called Queenie Park with a big conference center that that I one of my cops can get us a half price deal on the space, but that's why I got to have a lot of advanced notice and i gotta have money up front because i gotta pay yeah, rent yeah, yeah, yeah. well it's, it's like everything you know this is a professional endeavor and yeah you, you gotta you gotta commit you gotta commit you can't sit on the fence this can't be a last second thing right. uh you're, you're getting incredible information and training uh, and it's not available everywhere there are a lot of people saying they're doing stuff but it's not it's not the same they're not going to be pattern busting which is I got to reiterate that because that is an extremely important thing. So, yeah, give Ken uh, a lot of notice and tell him. Even if you – right now, even if you're not 100%, can't commit to that time, but you can, you think and you're thinking about it, you're 60% thinking about it, just contact him now. Don't wait. Yeah, let me tell because, you. Yep. because he needs to plan, and then you're going to have to – you're going to have to get him money through uh, PayPal or whatever to uh, – to secure your spot because he can't go off of maybes just like I, I can't either. I don't, I don't, you know, for me, this is a, a complete business. This is a side light thing for Ken. So I'm just trying to help him out by being very specific to everybody because, you know, if you're, you can't wait the last second to book an airplane flight. I mean, you can sometimes they're sold out, but you're going to pay like five times more if you do that. Well, and, the good uh, thing is here, if nothing else, they can rent one of these little motorized, these little rental scooter things now, and they could scooter down here from Boston or something. On one of those little things. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that's a, 
I don't think that's going to work in June. And by the way, it's predicting a very horrible weather uh, yeah. for the winter there. You know, I, I just saw that it's already it's already started. Like the Northeast is very cold in the U.S. right now. So, oh, we already had a couple of really rough weeks. Now it warmed up this week, but it's starting again tonight late. And uh, yeah, they're saying December is going to be kind of dry here, but then they're claiming, boy, by the time January comes, we're going to have a real winter like we haven't in a few years. So that sucks. But yeah, I'll end up as soon as I get with some of my law enforcement people, as soon as I can announce the formal date, make sure we have the space. Then at that point, I'm going to have to put stuff up on Facebook saying, here's the cutoff date. If I don't have X number of dollars by this date, by this many people, it's it's officially canceled and I'll take my regular guys and I'll just do it in our normal space because I'm not going to go out of pocket. If I'm not going to you know cover my expenses and make money, of course, I would cancel, you know. Um, so, yeah, so there's that. But thanks for, for bringing those items up just for maybe some other new people that are interested. I draw from another body of guys around here, too. There are a lot of guys in town here that are doing other arts, and they come. I just uh, – when I did the last one, I had a guy who's – I don't even know what his Aikido ranking is now. And he just came back from Moscow. He was in Moscow <laughs> training over there with Steven Seagal. And I'm like, oh, boy, I can't wait to hear those stories, you know. So uh, – but, uh, yeah, I get guys, you know, that, that have their own schools and do other things that come to uh, to some of these, so – um, it's kind of nice. They get a different perspective, you know, so that's good. Yeah, yeah we'll see. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm going to say it again. I've said it five, six times, but it takes more than that to sink in. Um, you're, you're, you're not tradition, you're non-traditional, you're iconoclastic, you're pattern busting. And that's uh, something that a lot of people probably have not been uh Party to. They haven't witnessed that. They haven't, you know, they haven't, they haven't been uh, in a training situation like that. So it's definitely worth checking that out just for that aspect. Number one. So, uh, yeah, some, yeah, I'd say that. Some people ask, you what? know, well, what's the difference between a, a pattern and a sequence? And I go, well, because I, I usually show the difference. I go, a sequence would be, I might have one guy do attack A, and another guy has to defend against that attack. But his way of defending against it is not going to be a set pattern response, That's and it's not going to be the same every single time. Because I will purposely put the attacking guy in such a role that it's more like real, where he's not... You know, he's not like a trained fencer who every time he gives a straight thrust, he's going to go just like this, right up the middle. Every time it's going to come at this angle, or it's going to come at this angle, or he might drop down on one knee before he throws that thrust. See, so that's that's going to change what you're going to do. So there may be a little bit of a sequence to it, but there's a lot of variables. Like the angle of attack is one of those variables that'll change a lot. You know, whether or not the guy might lead with a strike before he gives a thrust, or you know, so just to give an idea, you know, there's sequences. Yeah. Of things happen but they constantly change so that you don't have a fixed mindset that every time you know something comes here i always do this 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 and this 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 and this which is that's the pattern approach right which is easy to blow through that it's easy to to uh, easier to defeat that because the guy's trying to do the same thing every time and that same pattern is not appropriate for changes in variables like you said earlier sometimes as soon as the distance changes a little bit well you'd be reaching way out here your balance would be compromised and you'd be out of room, you know, when you're trying to make this one pattern stick to, to your response all the time. So there you have to be able to change yeah, range and, constantly. And actually that's a good uh, nexus to why there so many martial arts fail because they're they're training people to do that and they're not flexible and flexible in their application. They cannot take what they learn, and we can pick on Wing Chun or Taekwondo or Hapkido or whatever. Uh, they're they trying to do something in one way with a, with a certain distance and a certain even speed and rhythm. And when that is changed, then it doesn't work. And that's where they have that's where they fail. And that's where you saw a lot of people fail uh, because, for one thing, like let's take Taekwondo. They both stay at a distance from each other and they bounce up and down because they want to spin. They want to spin and kick and stuff. And they want a certain distance to do that. But when this comes in, they can't get it off. 
You know, some of the best guys who spend thousands of hours can try something, but the percentage of that landing as opposed to getting taken down or low. And especially, and that's in a con and that's in a competition setting. Now you put them on snow or ice and it's gone. That jumping, spinning back kick against someone rushing in is not going to work, you know? And, uh, I don't deal when those, I don't deal in that type of gambling. I, I deal with, uh, high percentage going to work uh, <clears throat> stuff. And, Anyway, so that's kind of a let me let me segue into what I did. So what I did, uh, my stuff was 13 hours. We did 13 hours. We did three hours on Friday night, eight hours on Saturday, nonstop, except for little water breaks. But they went eight hours. There was no lunch break, nothing. Our, my, our training is a lot more. Um, you get the momentum that's going, and they keep going, and it's very structured about how they – they do stuff and they did two hours on Sunday and uh, they loved it. That was the first time that I applied that, that exact time frame to uh, normal people. And uh, it, they loved it. And they, 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 in fact, all those guys voted for it to continue on that paradigm. They love it. And uh, so, because uh, Friday night starts out with uh it's reception and information, and then we uh, about how I train, how it's different, how what we're doing, and how my teaching methodology is very different than anything they've done before, and we keep that a secret. We don't talk about that to people who don't show up, so uh, you have to show up because I'm not going to divulge that. But it's very different. No one else, outside of myself, no one's ever gone through that like that. And once they have, they love it. They don't want to train any other way, which is a fact because I got 100% retention on all these guys who show up. Anyway, so that starts on Friday, and then we go into actual training on Friday night. But then on Saturday, we we take off, and it's hardcore, situational. What I did, what we covered in the last thing that I did was in Ravenna, Ohio, and uh, that was urban is like we're talking about, I do different uh, in my stuff is at uh, combat judo, the commando training, commando martial art training, and that's about situations. It's about being uh, very isomorphic, and if you don't know what that is, you can pick up the same way that NASA trains and then militaries actually train for real. And so we replicate the exact situations, and you're going to have the same hardships. We do not think you're in Muay We do not think that you're in uh, Muay Thai shorts or anything like that. You're wearing what you're going to wearing most of the time, and you have, uh, of course, the footing is different. We change the lighting. We uh, we change. We have, this was also a uh, multiple attacker. They had because in reality, in real stuff, it's not one on one. It's not one on one. You better be predicting that you're going to have multiple attackers so that you can't handle that. That's the problem with sports stuff. Sports stuff is all geared towards one on the one. It's it's fair. That, that's the problem. Uh, I mean, that's the problem why it doesn't fit with war fighting. This is war fighting, and so which is counter violence too, because violence in, in mob attacks, people trying to carjack you, kidnap you, ATM rob you, and it's not going to be a fair deal. They're going to try to surprise you. They're going to rush you. They're not going to. If they really want to. And I'm talking about violence, not talking about bar fights that escalate. And then, you know, there's a place there that you can de escalate if you really try hard enough in bar fights. I'm talking about you're just there and someone tries to hit you with a bottle. No, that's violence. That is not an escalation. That's just violence. That's what we're training for those situations. And this was urban, which is very close. Everything's very close. You don't have that distance. You don't have the distance like you would in the parking lot or whatever. You don't have that. You're, if you, you're, or you're inside of a house and someone busts out of your closet. It's a home invasion, which is the scariest thing for people. And uh, we do, we do train people in gun stuff, which I'm going to get to in a moment. But it's a lie for people to think that uh, I have a gun. That's the solution. Uh, nobody has a gun 24-7. You can't go everywhere in the United States, even with a concealed carry permit. You can't go to certain places with a gun. You can't travel with a gun. You, uh, you don't have, a, most people don't have a gun in their shower. They don't, you know, 
they don't, there's a lot of things, and they got to be able to fight to get to the gun, which a lot of people don't do. We do that. We train people to do that, to get to the gun. And then I can also say that just having a gun is, once again, like just having a guitar. Just you know, your guitar is in your Jimmy Page. You need to go through tactical training, and you have to shoot a hell of a lot of rounds. I mean, if you're somebody new, you got to shoot thousands of rounds, and uh, most people don't do that. And and, they, and that's just shooting, and then there's tactical under pressure. So most people, they are not, you know, they're not Delta guys. They're not. They have. They're not shooting 500 rounds a day for two years. You know, they don't have that, and they don't have the training. I mean, there's just a million things missing. Uh, so. The thing is that that's what I, I am. I'm dealing with the worst case situations, and this was urban, and uh, it went really well. It went really, really well. Everybody, incredible. They, just, they thought it was incredible because it's something I started doing uh, over a year ago. I started training normal people, how I train contractors in the military uh, units around the world. And, and it's worked. I didn't ever think it was going to work with normal people, but it has worked uh, very, very well. They love it. And they wouldn't train any other way. All the testimonials, reviews are very positive. Uh, you can get on my uh, Facebook group, uh, Combat Judo, uh, my page and stuff, and you can see, talk about it. And uh, then the website, uh, combat-judo.com, Handles all, of it. and what I want to, what I want to, what I want to say, I'll kind of like get ahead of myself a bit here about where the future is going, and we're we're switching to a full spectrum training. Uh, what I'm doing is full spectrum. I have a, I have a, okay, I, I can't, I don't know everything at the highest level. Uh, I am, of my specialty, what I am a subject matter expert is zero distance warfare. Zero distance warfare. It involves when you can't get the firearms up, basically, or fighting to get the firearms. So I cover unarmed, I cover knife, and I cover stick, which is one of the things we're going to do. Commando, we're going to do the commando stick uh, camp coming up, and that is not it is not Filipino martial arts. It doesn't look like Filipino martial arts. It's not using the same. Uh, it's not using a scream of sticks. It's different thing i'll talk more about that that's coming up uh, and but we're also switching to gun courses i have a guy uh, one of my guys that i've had for a very long time he's the major in the US Army, and he's going to be the guy who's teaching the handgun we're going to what our very first our very first uh course is going to be concealed carry how to fight with concealed carry because most people don't ever cover that. They cover the the full size, like the Glock and Glocks. They they handle how to play or how to shoot the Glock 17. And then you're like, okay, so you take the Glock 17 and you just transpose that to a Glock 43. Well, that doesn't work. I mean, it, it there's a big difference. So you change the weapon, change how it's carried, change the weight, change all these things. Uh, the accuracy is not the same. It's just different. Uh, very different, and so we're gonna we're gonna run a concealed carry, and we're, we're basically we decided we're basing that course on everybody either bringing, or I think we'll be able to have rifles for people, and that's going to be at the Smith and Wesson uh, MP Shield nine hundred, which uh, I don't have here. I can't have that here in town. Um, but that's the gun we're gonna we're gonna have, which is comparable to the Glock 43. Uh, better though, the Smith and Wesson is better than the Glock 43. And so that's what we're gonna base it off, and it's gonna be a, a inside the waistband holster. So it's gonna be practicing, just like what you're talking about too. Practicing with the exact weapon that you're gonna have to use, so that you're not, you're not training the wrong weapon, which is what a lot of people do. Yeah, as you know, they they train out with the wrong thing. Like let's talk about, for example, the scream of sticks. In the scream of sticks are a certain length, they're a certain weight. That does not that does not transpose to a baseball bat or a pool cue. It does not work. There are things that you can the guys who do uh, historical European martial arts or or derived European martial arts stuff will tell you 
a, a scream of stick and a quarter staff are not trained the same way. They're vastly different. They're very different. And the, the weight and the length of the weapon changes with everything. And especially you'll find that with sword, not from, from knives to sword. That changes. And also if you're slashing, if they're like a cutlass or a, a machete versus a, a rapier, vast differences in how you use them. So the Filipino thing is based off of slashes, off of, off of bolos mainly. Bolos are mainly are basically machetes. And then the stick work is supposedly, is supposed to, in these cases, supposed to represent the machete. But there are stick systems that are only about the stick. And I learned them. And I learned a very good one in the Philippines. At, in the Philippines, not from somebody that knew somebody that once saw somebody that was at one time in the Philippines. No, I go. I'm trained in the, the the meccas of these places, and I train in Cebu. So anyway, the point being that still around a certain length, certain weight stick. You can't use a baseball bat like that. A baseball bat's different, you know. And uh, so my point being is that I train specifically. For people with the weapon that they're going to have, that they're going to have with them, or the weapons they're not going to have with them, or the weapon, or how to get to the weapons, and all this stuff is about uh, putting people in very hard situations, very hard environments. And we also did a couple of things that we call a little deal, and I won't really talk about it. There's some still photos up on uh, the combat judo thing because. It's very unique what we're doing, and people, if I try to explain it, will not get it. Uh, it would be like uh, it would be like try, like the blind guys trying to describe an elephant. Remember that? Like there's four different blind guys, and they're uh, different parts of the elephant, and they give different descriptions, and nobody really gets the the result of it. It's the same thing, you know. There's certain stuff that we can talk about that will make sense to people who are not there. But it's all about the experience, and I think that's. Uh, that's one of the things that ties us together back to our combat JKD is that it's the experience. It's very different. It's very different than what other people are doing. And if you haven't had that experience, it's, uh, it's unexplainable. It's here's my favorite saying about that. How would you describe the killer green to a blind man? It can't be done. It can, it can only be experienced. And if they, cannot see, they'll never be able to understand green, which is very Bruce Lee-like, too. I mean, when you say, when that, that, that sounds like something Bruce would have taken if he would have heard that, you know? Yeah. So that, that, but that's where we're going. But what I, well, I just want to reiterate, so we're switching to a full spectrum because we are, we, are, we are not sport martial arts. We are not, and we're moving hardcore into the real niche of self protection where no screwing around, no applied BJJ, no applied Muay Thai, no sports stuff. It's completely different. And if you don't know, then you should come and check us out and, and come because everything's different. The targets are different, how we train is different. I guarantee you've never been trained how I'm training you. It's very, you learn very quickly. And you're focused because uh, I mean the, my guys all know that and they'll tell you that too. So I just and they can give reference to that fact. So that's what we're moving toward here in 2019. We have planned. We have a Q course, but that's only for people who have had some uh, training, and that's very rough. That's a five day thing. That's a uh, kind of an elite thing. That's not that's not open. You have to qualify to do that. But we're going to have a commando uh, stick camp coming up, and that one is going to be cool. That would be fun. Anybody can come to that one. And then we're going to have the gun course, like I'm saying, and anybody can come to that too. There will be more information about that. But I'm just giving an overview of where we're going in 2019, and maybe you can give an overview of what so you project for 2019 to give people kind of a, a – uh, a brochure, a brochure, or a you know a set music set list or something. You know, I mean, it put it. In the end. What, what, what are your plans in 2019? Me? Yeah, Ken. Uh, well, <laughs> funny. One of the things that uh, that'll probably happen. Uh, uh, probably about a month and a half or two months. I have to get with Bill. I've talked about Bill Thomas before. He was. 
he was one of those first groups that was actually training with Vladimir and Mikhail, and he was uh, they they had to put him in uniform. He was training on a Spetsnaz base, which is crazy to me. But I've got the photos. I see, I've see, got the proof hanging on the wall in our studio. Anyway, one of the things I'm actually going to have Bill come in because he does a very interesting thing where you're blindfolded through the. I do stuff blindfolded sometimes, but. He does this entire thing where you're blindfolded through the whole class, and it's really pretty fascinating. Because in, in some of it, there's there's <laughs> there's team tasks that you have to do with other guys who can't see either. So you know, part of the idea is it's making you use other senses. It, it, it amplifies them right away. Also, it's more like being in a pitch black black environment too, with no access to light. It just brings out some really fascinating stuff. So that's not me doing that, but it'll be Bill. And that's just just pretty cool to see how people function and that we've done it before it's pretty far out uh, other than that you know just just continuations of other things that i are already do um i'm gonna increase we do multiple work now as far as multiple attacker work there's going to be a pretty dramatic increase in that for me in 2019. there's a lot of material i haven't even done with with most of these guys yet and uh there's a bit of a buildup to develop certain skills for that. Um, so that's about to happen. Um, you know, other than that, just general continuation of regular class. Uh, I mean, and we're, and we're, and we're, and you and I are, we're both still looking towards our mutual thing. If we, we have get that thing that we're talking about, which will be pretty wild. <laughs> if and, and, I mean, if nothing else, uh, Ken and I will try to do something uh, it, and if everything goes well, we'll have uh, Stan involved in it. Uh, I think Stan brings a, a, a different kind of dynamic to everything. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, even and even even Norm, maybe you know a little segment maybe with Norm even too. But uh, I think it's going to be heavily Ken and myself, but and then you know. Uh, guest stars or whatever guest guest appearance players that's if everything goes really really well if we can logistically yeah. get that out but it's uh people have asked about this for a long time i mean definitely about you and me uh doing something and uh yeah we're all for it we want to do it and we want to give people uh kind of a connection to the past too a connection to our past basically connection to our past part of the jkd uh past that a lot of people don't know and i mean it would be great to be if jay could get back but uh, we don't know about jay damato we don't know about what's going on because he was he was uh fundamental in getting dan and asanto known around the united states and on the seminar circuit uh he was uh, he was just a fundamental uh, guy without him uh, a lot of stuff wouldn't happen i mean it just wouldn't have happened and uh, he's got some unique uh, stuff that he's done over the years. So that would be good because uh, we're trying to give – that. that's like a, a look at – we don't know how to build it. We do know how we're going to how we're gonna actually do it, though. It's going to be JKD. Our combat – it's going to be combat JKD and what we've done with it and how we've gone on to, to do what we do now because, like, you're hearing from Ken, he's doing stuff different uh, than what we – that we he's not fixed he's not a pattern fixed guy i guess that's a, the best way for me to explain ken to other people is he's 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 a pattern buster he's not doing a fixed thing he doesn't have a fixed routine he doesn't have a fixed uh sort of uh, structure even uh as far as you know you're going to do this on monday you're going to do this on friday he doesn't do that so and my stuff is uh, my stuff is worst case scenario uh it's Designed for war fighting, and if it works in war, it'll work for you. You know, that's one of our sayings. And then you can see where Stan went because uh, Stan has a has a different vibe. And uh, I like the interaction of all of us together. I think that that think I think that alone is what people would be very interested in. It's just the energy you know, to kind of get new age in here or something. I don't know if new age, new age has been replaced by some other place, but. There's some cool about it, you know, and uh, but anyway, so yeah, 2019, there's a lot of stuff planned, and uh, it's good that, that people get a, a, an overview about it now because we want them to be part of it if they want, if they're so inclined, if they're uh, if they if this is part of their life, uh, if they if they want to, you're doing a lot of self development stuff, if they want to 
uh, develop themselves, their attributes, their skills, uh, even, I guess, in a way, getting to know themselves. I mean, because you and I can delve into that. Like it's neo Reikian, you know, it's neo Reikian. It's, it's sort of psychodynamic, right? Now that you're going to use those terms, I think. The, the self acquisition, it's sort of Rogerian, it's self acquisition, if we're going to use psychological things. And uh, what I'm doing is giving people the best self protection that can be done. And I, and I, we decided to go full, full spectrum, full spectrum guns. Yeah, perfect. We're all for it. Yeah, we'll, we'll teach you how to shoot. We'll teach you how to get to the gun. We'll teach you what to do if you don't have a gun. We'll teach you how to do if you have a knife. We'll teach you what to do if you have a stick uh, or a rifle. Uh, our stick stuff is based off of uh, about a 37-inch stick that we're doing. So that translates very well to a rifle. It's not the same thing that if you were in the Army of the Marines. It's not just like a head course. It's not like that. So just to... Just to Quash that idea. It's not like that, uh, and it's not Filipino. It's not like if you've done Danana Santo or Piki Tercia. It's not that stuff either. I'm gonna show you how to beat those guys pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you guys, know, one thing I wanted to say in all this is, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were alluding to it. I mean, you know, I well, one of the things that would come out with this doing this joint work is that. We're describing a, a, a learning process, you know. I mean, a lot of how I approach things is from a standpoint of mobility, body mechanics, and timing, and make you as adaptable as possible. That's the way, in a nutshell, I would state how I train people, what I'm trying to get them to do. It's not like we're not doing anything. We're taking a very structured approach to, to teaching people how to move their bodies in ways that are the most conducive for the situation they're in. So there's, I would say that. Now that's just become my focus based on my evolution as someone who has embraced the whole JKD philosophy and what I've done with it. And then there's where you've gone with it, which is much more from, to me, from a, a really solid, um, especially military application approach and then branching that off now into the civilian world for guys that want that kind of level of training for, for as far as you can go with it there. Then there is, you'll see Stan, which I'm really happy that Stan has started to real actively start to train and teach people again, too, because now his mind is back there. And his approach is is, is very different. His approach is probably, um, well, I would say it's closer to Dan and Asano, but it's still different. You know, you'll, you'll see elements of Kali and Salat and with the JKD, but he's got his spin on it because we're not coming from this say uh some type of karate style where the yeah, idea yeah. is to try to make every guy look exactly yeah, like yeah, the yeah, other yeah. guy yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. which is crazy you can't do it anyway that's a very that's good a point and what as, yeah, we're not cookie cutter and that's what i meant by its structure you're not going to get a cookie yeah. cutter structure that's what i what I, that's what i was trying to uh, get across when i was sure. saying you're not structured you're not structured like a karate school where everybody comes in and on monday they're going to do the form or they're going to do rising blocks or whatever the hell, you know, you, you're not going to do that. That's what I, that's in my I, mind. That's what I think most people who've done any sort of martial arts. That's the type of structure. In fact, they're their schools making huge money doing that because they're just giving people a pastime fitness, uh, misleading them and their people can't fight. You know, they're not, and, problem solving. They're not having a problem solve. That's yeah. The problem. yeah, yeah. Well, that's you know, and that's something I said on my tapes, my first tapes well, about combat JKD when I was coming out. And I said we are problem solvers. That is, that's the number one thing that I mean, trying to describe what you and I went through and how we were trained, it takes volumes. But here and there, you know, I hopefully some of these snippets will will resound with people and they will they will understand. But I said a lot. I think you know those tapes. Although that company is uh, cheating me and ripping me off, uh, I haven't gotten paid in years, and I, I need to deal with that actually. Uh, but those that whole tape series delves into into that combat JKD a, a lot about the mindset and how we were in train. I mean, not in depth like we're going to go now. It's we're we're doing something different. But the thing is, yeah, I I do I agree with you when you. I mean, I. I Think it's cool to say that yeah you're dealing with uh you're de you're dealing with the uh the 
the crucial aspects of a real dynamic fight, which means that it's moving, everything is, everything is taking place in time, number one. It's taking place in time, which a lot of people don't understand. It's taking place in time and the distance, <coughs> spatial. So that, that once it's become spatial, time and distance, equate to each other and they and they change each other because the distance will change the time the time will change the distance and you got to be able to do that in in a place where the lighting changes the footing changes your a, a range of motion changes because of the clothing you're wearing the or what your uh how much weight you're carrying maybe injuries all of these things uh and of course low lighting and and are you comfortable? Is it cold or is it hot? Is it raining? You know, are you in mud? Because I'm telling you, uh, like I, we won our Bravo camp, which was is held in the in winter and the outside in the snow, uh, which we're tentatively planning on Alaska. <laughs> we're tending that that's going to take some planning, but we're we're thinking about holding one of our Bravos in Alaska. So, how many people have ever trained in snow wearing mittens and parkas? Can you fight that stuff? You That's don't right. know until you've done it. And I'm telling you, you guys training in MMA gyms are clueless. Okay, you're clueless about what's going to go on there, and they're not the. I mean, boxing gyms too. You don't know what to do. Uh, you're you're screwed. So the point is, uh, yeah, you're you're teaching people timing, motion, movement, body control, agility. I like to call that agility. Coordination to me is a single limb, agility is whole body. Uh, and in real fighting, agility is more important because you need to move your whole body out of the way. Just like if you were if you were fighting a bull, uh, moving your arm out of the way doesn't mean anything if you, you get the horns in the pelvis, you know. So you got to move. You got to move your yourself. Then uh, there's a lot of things that we do that delve into very core psychological realities about humans, and that's that everyone knows a fight or flight. Well, actually, there's freeze. It's flight, fight, or freeze, and mostly humans freeze. And yeah. you can you can look at a whole. If people didn't freeze, they wouldn't be getting hit, run over in the street by cars as they watch as the cars come at them or the bus. You know, the, all you have to do is move out of the way. But it, it's beyond some people's thing because there's an evolutionary thing as a prey animal. If you're a prey animal, and humans are, because we're not. Like they want to think that we're apex predators, but we're not. We're not apex predators. Uh, that prey animals will freeze, hoping that the the predator doesn't see them move, because predators go off of movement. So, and you you can watch that with uh, squirrels and rabbits and stuff. Yeah, rabbits go this way and this way. But of course, you know the most uh, clear example is a possum, right? A possum plays dead, right? What is that? No movement. Well. Playing dead with a moving car doesn't work because okay? you're because you're going to be dead. And the thing, what I'm getting to is humans freeze. That's that that is the thing that you got. They're going to freeze more than they're going to do anything else than, than anything else. And so you have to train people how to override that. Uh, you know what? That is great that you said that. I'll tell you something. Here, here's one that's fun. This is so simple, but it's crazy. I love doing this when you have new people too. One of the things we'll do sometime when we when we warm up is we're just we're just walking around, right? We're breathing, walking around, breathing, and then all of a sudden we go. I say, okay, we're going to go chaos now, which means instead of people just walking around in a circle, everybody starts heading for the middle of the room simultaneously, right? And it's amazing with what you just said. How often, especially when people are doing this for the first time, they can't believe that like somebody's just going to keep coming right for them and crash right into them. And they get hit and they don't know what to do. And it, it, you have to train people to actually slip and slide and turn and move to avoid crashing into all the other people. It's not, it's just not natural. The first few times people do it, they're slamming into each other. It's the silliest thing in the world, but it proves exactly what you're saying. That's why it's one of the most basic things I do to start giving people a different way of dealing with moving objects moving at them. And then you know, people get better and better at it and you're slipping and sliding and moving through groups of people like they're like they're oiled or something. But in the beginning, no, there's a lot of clashing and crashing. Folks just don't. I can't believe he's about to. Oh, bam. And then the guys knocked him flat on their back because they just stood there. It's exactly what you're saying. 
And that's a really simple, fun way to exercise that just to see what people are going to do and to help break them out of that, you know, that simple exercise. That well, gave them. <laughs> well, you know, here, here's something, here's something that, okay, you just gave away something and I'll, I'll give away something else too here. Yeah. And that is, uh, you cannot do anything without preparation. You cannot. You have got to be like if you're going to climb a mountain, you can't just go out and climb a mountain. You have to prepare to climb a mountain, and and if it's a big mountain, that means you have to technically have the right equipment. You're going to have to have the you're going to have to have the snap, the carabiners, the crampons, the the, the ropes. You got to have all that stuff, you know. You got, and I'm and I'm glossing over it. I'm I'm not a, a mountain climber of that sort. Of, you know a guy who is though, who's going to go up Everest this year actually. Anyway. That being said, uh, you have to prepare. Same thing. What do what does the military do? How, you know, like in a submarine, uh, they practice crash dives all the time. Why? Because you're not going to pull it off if you're not prepared and, uh, and done it. Same yeah. thing. What? Okay. Do you, does any professional? Let's go into sports. Does any professional basketball team, baseball team, football team just suddenly show up on Sunday or Wednesday or whenever the game is and play? No. They have they have practiced and prepared for that game. They have played lots of games before that. They they've worked on parts of the game. You know they've worked on their and that's what you're doing. That's what you're. That's what you and I are doing. We're preparing. The same thing with guys. You know I'm saying militarily. What do you do in the military? You drill. You you know you run scenarios. You, you drill for the, the thing that you're going to do. Firefighters, same thing, right? Firefighters, you know, they practice the good ones. They practice on this. Okay, here's here's what's going to happen. You got a, a three story structural fire. How are you going to deal with it? Blah blah blah, right? So, no one does anything without preparation. You don't take. You can try to take a test in school without prep without preparation, but you're not going to do as well if you as you prepare. Same thing with anything. And I think that's lost on people. You know, they realize like, okay, at their job, they have to prepare for their job, right? They have to get, they have to have a presentation. They have to, if they're a sales guy, they got to have their data. If you're an accountant, you got to have all the uh, records. You got to prepare for the audit or whatever. Everything you do, you prepare for. But when people suddenly, uh, this falls by the wayside when we start talking about self-defense, self-protection, they don't realize that you've got to prepare. And you're not going to suddenly just come out of nowhere and do well against a knife, for example. You, you know, and, and I would never tell someone to ever try to disarm someone with a gun if they have not been doing it a lot, a lot. I don't mean you watched it, and I don't yeah. mean you did it three times five years ago. Don't attempt it. You know, you're not up, you're not up to speed. You can't do it. Same thing with running. You think you're going to be a world class sprinter if you're not actually sprinting and, and preparing for it? No. And if you sprinted or you ran a marathon 12 years ago, it doesn't mean you can do it now. So same thing. When you start getting in some of these situations we're talking about, like the guy with a crowbar, uh, guy pulling a knife. Or someone has a gun close to you, you know, because you can get out of the situation. But don't try it. Don't try it by you saw someone do it, you saw a video, you went, to, you know, you have got to be doing it. You got to be prepared to do it. And I think that's that's what I was trying to make a connection here to is that what you were talking about when you're doing the dr the drill in the class. That's preparing people for when it happens. It's preparing people for when it happens. And uh, that freezing is everything. Um, it happens. It is, like I said, it's the majority of the time humans are gonna they're gonna freeze. So you and I have given out once again great information here, and, and uh, uh, I think that we that I want to keep it on topic, so I don't want us to go off on different tangents right now. So anything else that you want to add to that? Because I I think that we've really covered a huge amount. Yeah, right? Not really. It's really about wrap up time here. Anyway, for me, I have to go. But uh, no, I just think that uh, we gave folks some ideas of what we what we just did and some ideas of where we're headed and, and a couple things for hopefully in the not too far distant future that we can finally hopefully do together. So uh, really, I, I think that's that's pretty good, you know, for today as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Okay, so uh, here at the end, uh, 
<clears throat> my website is affluentfighting.com and combat-judo.com. I'm on Facebook, groups, my name. And Ken's going to put up his phone number again, and then you can contact him by his phone number or look for him on Facebook. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing other talks. But I just want to make sure that it's all in one place here so that, uh, you know, you heard about what we what we did in October uh, 2018, um, what we did plan. Wait, wait, okay. Put it up again, Ken. Hold, hold it up. Okay, there he is. It's not staying. 314. 504-1178. Okay, yeah, they got it now. Okay, so there's his, his phone number to contact him. Um, and so you got an overview of what we're planning. 2019 is going to be huge. We're going to do we've got big things planned. We got we'll be doing more talks. We got we have a, we have a strong loyal following on our talks. Uh, that's happened. It's cool and. Uh, and we're also kind of controversial in the JKD community, which is fine. I mean, I don't really care. Uh, but, it, you know, it says that we're polarizing people, which is always good because uh, the people who have a bland message, they they make no impact. You can think of anyone. Muhammad Ali, it wasn't bland. He made a huge impact. Same thing that we're trying for. But anyway, I'm going to sign us off here. So take care, everybody. And uh, like this, share this. And check out our other uh, videos and check out our pages and our Facebook stuff. All right. So we'll talk to you next time around, everybody.